showdown over Florida's new budget. Governor Rick Scott says he won't sign it. He won't sign it unless state lawmakers change it and give him the tax cuts he demanded. Who's wearing the white hats and the black hats here? The Bud Man with you, and that's where we begin. And a good Tuesday morning to you. You're on the 50,000-watt front porch here with Jenna and Jeff in tow, and we are ready to go. You know, Rick Scott, this guy is absolutely bulletproof. I mean, emotionally. He could give a rip what anybody thinks about him. He got elected to try to run this state like a business, to try to get our fiscal house in order, and everybody is at his throats. The Democrats, of course, in the legislature, and some of the Republicans, too. All of the unions, of course, feel threatened by Rick Scott. Teachers Union, in particular, over the merit pay and all of those changes. Um, but you know what? Status quo, business as usual, isn't going to get it in the state of Florida anymore. And that's why Rick Scott became governor. That in $73 million of his own money he threw into the campaign. But uh, more than anything, I think, people gave him a shot at running this state because they wanted the way we do things to change. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. And here's what's coming up. Because this is going to be a very, very interesting showdown. You've got a Republican governor and a Republican-dominated House and Senate. You'd think that would be the last scenario in which you'd have a showdown over a budget. Everybody ought to be singing kumbaya, patting each other on the back, saying, works for you? Yeah. Works for me? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Sign on the dotted line. Let's all, uh, you know, put our feet up and drink margaritas until the session ends. Or adjourn early but it's not what's happening you remember you remember rick scott during the campaign says if you put me in the governor's chair i am going to cut spending and i'm going to cut taxes at the same time a lot of people thought that was unwise thought he shouldn't try to do that and didn't believe that he could do it so he runs this up the flagpole with the legislature to balance the budget, which he is constitutionally required to do in this state. About $4 billion had to be found. And, and it was found. It was found in the form exclusively of spending cuts. They avoided tax hikes. They cut $4 billion in spending. And that's why so many people are screaming and want Rick Scott's throat. It's not like he's doing anything he, he didn't say he was going to do when he, when he campaigned. Was anybody, was anybody listening? Did they expect anything different? But, but Rick Scott at the time said, we're going to cut spending to balance the budget, but to stimulate the economy and make this a more attractive place for corporations to come from around the nation and around the world to set up business, thereby creating jobs, quality jobs, and stimulating the Florida economy long term. We're also going to phase down and phase out the corporate income tax in the state of Florida. Just by way of refreshment as I set the stage for this showdown and your take on it, Rick Scott wants to phase out corporate income taxes. Unfortunately, the legislature didn't include any of this stuff in the budget. They balanced the budget just with cuts they did not provide for any, these are spending cuts, they did not provide for any, for any tax cuts. What Rick Scott wanted was the 5.5% corporate income tax to be reduced to 3% in the first year, which would have cost the state about $835 million, the better part of $1 billion, and then over time to phase it down and phase it out at zero, thereby creating an incredibly attractive climate because he's talking about his 777 plan in order to create 700,000 jobs in seven years, and I can't recall what the other seven was. And that was the absolute centerpiece of it, was creating a business climate that was flat-out irresistible. And companies would come from all over to set up shop here. And um, I was in favor of that. I think that's a terrific idea. And everybody says, well, it's, you know, it's welfare for billionaires and it's, you know, it's giving tax breaks to wealthy corporations and the people who run them. The bottom line on that is, the bottom line on that is, if you get 
more companies in a more viable financial situation than they are now, and you attract new companies here, it is only good for the hard-pressed job market in, in Florida. You know, we've still got a 10 or 11 percent unemployment here, way above the national average now. And in order for Rick Scott to realize his dream and keep his campaign promise of bringing 700,000 jobs to Florida, and he's talking about quality jobs. He's not talking about, you know, another strip mall uh, restaurant or another strip mall uh, motel or something with low-paying uh, uh, jobs. He's talking about really quality jobs. you got to have the corporate tax cut. And I was in favor of that. He also wanted a reduction in property taxes. I was not in favor of that. I'll tell you why in a moment. And I'll also tell you more about this looming showdown. This is an incredible thing. The Republicans have it all. They have the deck stacked. You'd think they could all get along, but they cannot. And I will say this. I don't agree with Rick Scott on everything, but this guy is as tough as nails. Everybody thought the deal was done on the budget. In Tallahassee, Rick says, well... I don't know, you may think that, legislature. Guess what? I'm not signing this budget until you cut the taxes. More coming up. BHL 407-916-5400 if you want to get in on this. Assign the black hats and the white hats in the budget showdown in Tallahassee. It is 612 on a Tuesday morning. We're going to check real-time traffic and weather together on the twos now. Hey, how about lunch or dinner today at Houlihan's, my favorite restaurant? Have you been to a Houlihan's? There are four locations convenient throughout the Orlando area. It's an Orlando tradition. Uh, great prices, huge menu, something for every taste and every pocketbook, friendly service, a warm, inviting atmosphere. Really, it's the whole package. There's no place quite like Houlihan's. When you're there, I want you to check out a couple of great fish dishes I love, the almond-crusted tilapia and the wood-grilled Atlantic salmon. Oh, man. And the fabulous new Houlihan's menu of 30 small plates from just $3. Do you believe that? Flatbread, sliders, kebabs. Wow. <laughs> believe it. It's fantastic. Houlihan's, four locations, 192 in Kissimmee University Boulevard near UCF, East Colonial and I Drive, online, great website, hulahands.com. How about checking it out and then tell you, tell the Bud Man what you think of Hands. Lunch or dinner today at Hands. You'll love it. should the federal government save money on the backs of seniors in order to give tax cuts to the richest people in the country, in order to give tax cuts to businesses to send jobs overseas? What I call reverse 
Robin Hood. Running from the poor and working people to give tax breaks to the rich. And we need to stop it. Hey, in the market for a luxury car, don't buy one. Don't buy one until you have given the folks at Fountain Acura an opportunity to earn your business. And when you go see them, I believe, indeed, they will. They're great people to deal with, and the lineup of Acuras is just incredible. I've been test driving every single thing they've got. I love the top-of-the-line Acura RL sedan that I'm now driving, Jet Black Beauty. Oh, my goodness, high performance, luxury, and command of the road unlike anything I've ever experienced. And the top-of-the-line seven-passenger Acura MDX SUV, both of these incredible vehicles now at Fountain offering financing rates to you as low as 0.9% for well-qualified buyers. Now, if you're already driving an Acura, well, you know how incredible they are. But how would you like at Fountain to be able to upgrade your current Acura to a similar brand-new 2011 Acura model with no money down and a similar monthly payment? Wouldn't that be incredible? They can make it happen. Go check it out at Fountain Acura, South OBT, just south of the Florida Mall. Online, FountainAcura.com. Rick Scott says, I'm not going to sign that budget, gang. House and Senate. And they still have to conference that whole thing and put it together and work out their differences until you give me the tax cuts I wanted. I want them to get the corporate tax thing. They're going to have to then cut more spending to be able to afford the impact of the tax cut. Okay? They would have to do that. I'm in favor of that. But I'm not in favor of the property tax cut that he wanted, and I'll tell you why. People have already gotten a break on their property taxes because their whole house, housing values have tanked. People are already getting a break on that, you know? And that, that if Rick Scott got what he wanted there, he wanted to cut property taxes by $1.4 billion this year and another $1.4 billion over the next year, and that's going to cost a ton of money that's going to have to be made up with further, further spending cuts. I just don't think we need the property tax cut because we've already actually had one because of housing values plummeting. But I've got to get up, give it up for Rick Scott. You know, Charlie Crist would have said, well, I didn't get everything I wanted. Uh, but, uh, you know, we got the spending cuts. We got the budget balance. Let's get out of here, gang. You know, everybody loving each other just a little bit. Uh, you know, not Rick Scott. He says, <laughs> I'm sorry, gang. I'm not signing this, baby, until you give me what I want. 
I'm, I like the guy. I like the guy. He's tough as nails, and he can give a rip what anybody thinks. Here's Ron and Webster. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, bud. But I think the guy is wonderful. <laughs> I was very, I'm a, a very staunch conservative, Tea Party conservative here in Florida, and I thought for sure that we were so entrenched in our spending and other things that there was no way, and the way that this guy came up to the Republican Party making no friends whatsoever, that there was no way this guy was going to get anything done. They were going to stall him and stalemate him, and he wasn't going to get nothing done. And the way he stuck to his own guns and let the people talk to him and say, you know, go do what you need to do, Rick, He's doing just fantastic. And he's standing by his guns and going to get the tax cuts, uh, going to get the, yeah, the tax cuts that he's asking for. I think it's fantastic. Take him right to the base as far as I'm concerned. Thanks a lot, Ron. Appreciate the call. And, uh, Dan, you're next from Eustace in 60 seconds. What about it here? Are you backing Rick Scott on this, or have we cut enough? Can we, should we, cut taxes at the same time we have cut spending? You know where I am on this. 407-916-5400. But it's your state, too. What do you think on this? Should the legislature reconsider the budget with an eye toward cutting more spending so we can afford the impact of cutting at least the corporate taxes? 407-916-5400. I say yes. What say you? 622 on BHL, real-time traffic, and weather together on the twos. All right, sunshine today with scattered afternoon storms getting hot and steamy with a high of 90, now 69 degrees in Orlando. Dan from Eustis in beautiful Lake County. Uh, good morning to you, Dan. Good morning, bud. Uh, I agree with uh, the governor 100%. I mean, the the uh, the politicians and the bureaucrats are totally inefficient. They don't have to hustle. The money is spent much more efficiently in the private sector. And... Uh, you know, the, 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 the people and the, the politicians love power and the bureaucrats love to kick back. You know, they're a bunch of they, – they also – they're not experts in, in all the myriad different ways of, of, of doing business. It's better – the more money left with the people, the better. You know, if Rick Scott sticks with his pledge, I'm not signing this budget. Uh, unless you give me tax cuts here, I think the legislature is going to have to go back in there and make more spending cuts so they, they have to stay balanced. That's the Constitution, thank God. Uh, and, and, and they're going to have to cut more to afford at least the corporate tax cut. I wonder whether he might compromise and say, all right, well, I won't take the property tax cut. I won't demand that this year. Where are you on that? You understand that everybody's property taxes actually have been cut because the housing values are in the tank. Yeah, but the thing about it is that's that's now. When when things start picking up again, they'll they'll use the property taxes as another kind of slush fund for them to to get at people's hard-earned money, hard-earned wealth. And uh, you know, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it. Take care of it now. So so these crazies, they're not crazy, but uh, these 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 people that don't really have the expertise at, at, at making money and wealth, creating wealth for job creation, you know. And the right, and, and that, that's the businessman in Rick Scott. That's what we elected, an entirely different approach. But yeah. isn't it interesting that you would have this looming showdown with Republicans in control of everything? No, that just shows you how principled Rick Scott is. Oh, it does, but the, the most, a lot of Republicans go along with this idea that about, about uh, the power of the government and uh, that, you, that basically people work hard to, to send money to, uh, to the government. And they say, well, I'm paying taxes, so the corporations need to pay taxes. Well, the corporations don't work for the government, and the people shouldn't be working for the government. The, the people should yep. be working for themselves, too. Good call, Dan. Thank you. Gary, checking in from Mount Dora. Good morning, Gary. Yes, good morning, bud. Uh, I admire your stance and our governor's stance on this and standing tough because, you know, we have really two kinds of people in this country today. We have taxpayers and tax receivers, and even the Republicans 
are caving to some extent to cater to all the special groups that get a check from the government in one sort of another. All the agencies, the teachers, firefighters, policemen, and all that, we've heard that. But you, it's just a, a fact of life. We're going to have to have a lot of pink slips going out to a lot of people because we can't afford this big government, which has been growing for decades. And the only way we can grow out of this bad recession is to enhance the private sector where we actually make goods and services that people willingly pay for with value-added products. That's the only way. And if we continue this going on as we have with more agencies and government this and government that, we're just going deeper and deeper into a fiscal hole we'll never get out of. We got a shot across the bow yesterday when Standard & Poor's you know, threatened to downrate U.S. debt. Right. We're going to get heavily into that tomorrow, by the way. We're putting something together on that. And they're going to, well, you're going to hear this about downgrading Florida's debt, too. And we're going to have to face a real issue here. So I, I applaud him. I hope Governor Scott stands tough and really makes, really cuts across the board. In fact, there's a lot of yep. agencies that just have to go. I, I absolutely agree with that, Gary. Thank you very much. Jason in St. Cloud. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, bud. How are you doing today? I'm very well. And you? Oh, doing great. I got 45 seconds with your name on it. Take it. Um, well, I just want more people to realize that. Uh, that corporations really don't pay the income to, you know, their tax. It's the consumer, whether they make a product. Well, they pass it along, of course. Yeah, and um, and so if you take that tax away, the, the cost of that service or product is actually less, um, not more. I mean, you know, people think that if you if, if you add tax to the rich guy, the rich guy uh, pays it. Well, no, he just he just adds that to whatever he's making. Well, I think what I think basically what Rick Scott wants to do it's all about jobs and making his pledge on seven hundred thousand new jobs. And the only way you can do that is to uh, decrease the tax burden on the corporations who do the hiring. It's simply so they have more money available to hire and pay workers. Exactly. Exactly the deal. Thank you. Great calls on this. Everybody is up. And Adam, and those of you who are not up and Adam will be up and Adam when you hear from the wicked witch of the house, Nancy Pelosi. Now they clipped her bloom, her broomstick, but she still flew into Orlando yesterday. And Meta Scare was the mission. Next at 6:28. Hey, have you, um, have you made the call yet to my friends at Color Creed of Central Florida to learn more and get a free estimate on the alternative to paint that is Color Creed that I've been raving about ever since they Color Creed our daughter Carolyn's home, handed her a 25-year guarantee. The place looked like it had just been freshly painted, and there's a 25-year guarantee say it's going to look that way for a quarter of a century. Carolyn can't stop smiling, and neither can I. These are incredible people. Jim Dawson and his family-owned business is great crews. You're going to absolutely love them. They're as honest as the day is long. They've been serving us in Central Florida for a full 50 years, and boy, do they have the answer that paint can provide. The great alternative to paint is ColorCrete. Why? Well, not only the 25-year guarantee, but unlike with paint, with ColorCrete, you're going to get a protective barrier against wind-driven rain. Guess what? It also prevents mildew, and it puts an end to peeling, chalking, and cracking. you got to love this. Plus, they've cut the great ColorCrete price 10%. They'll even give you a free pressure cleaning of your driveway and sidewalks. My friend, it gets no better than this. Don't paint. ColorCrete starts with a Free estimate. You'll thank the Bud Man for this connection. Give him a call today. Color Creed, 407-851-3442. 407-851-3442. Online, ColorCreedUSA.com. Thank you. 
Hey, Mike. How are you doing? Our daily Wall Street Journal report now with Mike Salvatorelli, the editor of the Wall Street Journal Radio Network. Good morning to you, Mike. Well, I'm looking at the Wall Street Journal here, and uh, there's some good news and bad news on the jobs front the journal is highlighting. Um, U.S. firms, big ones, are hiring, but the bad news, <laughs> not here. Nasty. Boy, you got to tell you, I mean, I know they have to make the bottom line and they're in business to make a profit, but boy, when you're talking about the big companies here, that really, really is a drain and a drag on the recovery, isn't it? No question about it. Now, Ticketmaster is trying a new pricing system folks will want to connect to here. What's the deal on that, uh, Mike? Twice disappointed. Orders were sent on those tickets to make sense 
in white, little thick hats, and she said, Look at us. It's about to be a little difficult for you to stand over the effect of the sky and then blow the same thing as one of these factors here. Well, you may be able to strike a bargain there if you hit it just right. And finally, in the Wall Street Journal report, uh, they extended the tax line uh, deadline till midnight last night because of a holiday in Washington on the 15th. All right, so what if you wind up getting audited by the IRS? The Wall Street Journal has some advice. Mike? Well, it's got to be dealing with the tax line. We all know that. I mean, that's all the work of the IRS, right? Well, now, in light of the trouble we've had, Goldman Sachs and the state tax chance this thing, they should have some action with an IRS agent. Whoa, hang on a second. Stop talking and be humble. A bud man can't do either one of those. I'm a talk show host. <laughs> what else you got? <laughs> Save the paperwork. Great advice, as always, and it's all in the best newspaper in America, the Wall Street Journal, the online edition, WSJ.com. Love our partnership with you guys, Mike. Have a great day and another Wall Street Journal report. We'll look forward to having you with us tomorrow morning, same time. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. It is 639 here on BHL. It's interesting. Nancy Pelosi is now the House Minority Leader. And boy, I'll tell you how the mighty have fallen from her position as Speaker of the House when the Democrats had the majority. Do you think Nancy Pelosi as House Speaker on a congressional break, of which there are many, and they're out for two weeks now for Passover and Easter, how much time are you getting off for Passover and Easter? Well, She's now the House Minority Leader. Do you think, as Speaker, she would have been in Orlando? She was here yesterday, talking to about 60 people at a senior center. But this is the Obama administration strategy against the Paul Ryan budget, uh, which calls for major restructuring in the entitlements of Medicare and Medicaid. It has to happen, or these are all going to disappear for everybody, and they're going to sink this country's economy. Nancy Pelosi flew in on her broomstick, and she is playing the meta scare card. I want you to listen. Why should the federal government save money on the backs of seniors in order to give tax cuts to the richest people in the country, in order to give tax cuts to businesses to send jobs overseas? And she went on, I, I, I listened to the whole thing, uh, and I just played you an excerpt because there's only so much of Nancy Pelosi that I would visit upon you at this time of day, or on me. Uh, you know, but, but again, the whole idea being that the Paul Ryan budget this is going to be the end of Medicare as you know it. These are the Obama administration talking points. It came from the president himself in that cockamamie speech of his, okay, that was supposed to be policy and was all presidential politics and ginned up and ginning up for the reelection. Uh, but now, she was not alone yesterday at the local senior center playing the Medicare card. Um, liberal Democrat congresswoman from Florida, Corinne Brown. She, who survives in power in perpetuity because of this absurdly gerrymandered district to catch all of her supporters that winds its way from Orlando all the way like a snake and a serpent to Jacksonville, Corinne Brown proudly playing that medic scare card as well. What I call reverse Robin Hood. Run from the poor and working people to give tax breaks to the rich. There they go, in tandem. I'll, t <laughs> I'll tell you what, <laughs> there, there's no place I would have wanted to be in all of Central Florida yesterday less than right there. I'm really glad I'm not a cub reporter who got assigned to go cover Pelosi and Brown throwing out the Metascare card at the local senior center. Do you understand the game? that is being played here. It is so disingenuous what the Obama administration is trying to do. And they're using their minions like Pelosi and Brown to get it done. I'll flesh this out more for you and take your calls as we continue. And I'm really sorry 
I'm really sorry I had to listen to the two of them, but it had to be done. 407 916 5400, toll free 1 866 916 5400, 642 on VHL. Hey, do you really know what shape your heart's in? Do you think the ticker's okay because you don't have chest pain and shortness of breath? Uh, have you passed a couple of heart tests and so you're just kind of feeling like, well, you know what, I guess I don't have a problem here. Yeah. <laughs> I, but believe me, there's only one way to know definitively what shape your heart's in, and that is through the technology pioneered in Central Florida by the one and only Dr. Ken Kronhaus with his knowledgeable and caring staff behind him at Lake Cardiology. He calls it the Bud Scan in my honor. He had the CT coronary angiography heart scan medical breakthrough before anybody else. And I believe the finest heart imaging is available anywhere where it all began in Central Florida at Lake Cardiology home of Dr. K. And so does ICACTL. They are the commission that sets the standard for quality care and heart CT scanning. They've looked around and they've decided that Lake Cardiology home of Dr. Ken Kronhaus is the first and only medical facility in Central Florida. Florida, they are accrediting for CT scanning of the heart. That's how incredible they are. It's your heart. It's your life. Don't risk a sudden lights-out heart attack. No matter what test you've had, whether you have symptoms or not, check in and ask at Lake Cardiology if this bud scan that saved my life might save yours. See if it's right for you. 352-735-1400. 352-735-1400.
You know, it's no exaggeration to tell you, my friend, that scarcely a day goes by when somebody doesn't contact me one way or another and ask me about the Metafast program that took 75 pounds off the Bud Man in six months or to tell me their story. They were inspired by the Bud Man, went to, a me went to a Metafast center, and they've lost 40 pounds, 70 pounds, 110 pounds. I've had people say, Bud Man, I've lost 150 pounds. And it was so easy, I couldn't believe it. I've been frustrated with my weight problem all of my life. And the Metafast weight control program at your Metafast center, well, I think it's going to be the answer for you because this program is so healthy and the food is so delicious. All of it was developed by doctors. It's been recommended by more than 20,000 doctors since 1980. And at your Metafast center, with help from your Metafast counselor, a real key to this plan, you can lose up to 2 to 5 pounds a week, up to 2 to 5 pounds a week. I found it to be effortless. You can do it if I can do it, believe me. Call your Metafast Center now and learn more and get started today. 1-888-9-METAFAST, 1-888-9-METAFAST. It's 1-888-9-METAFAST. Couple of new conveniently located Metafast Centers in Lake Mary and Winter Park and more online at metafastflorida.com now by the way call now and receive 35 meals free with the purchase of a full program at your local metafast center wow are we getting calls now from tierra del fuego isn't that illegal isn't that the southern tip of south america is that allowed on an AM signal, if the announcer says it, it must be true. I used to be one of those guys. <laughs> anyway, great to have you with us. And apologies to our friends watching the Bud Man on the ubiquitous Bud Cam, which is available to you online. And uh, it is looking right at me from about 18 inches away. And I keep on grimacing. And I'm caught in a dilemma here. And Jenna hates my incessant whining. But I have a sinus headache this morning. The problem is I need all of my severely limited mental faculties to do a job on this show worthy of you listening on the radio. And if I take anything, it takes the edge off me. So I'm playing in pain here today and whining quietly to the staff behind the scenes and grimacing, uh, if you can see me, on the bud cam because my head hurts. Jenna, that's what's going on. I'm sure. Okay, okay. That's the kind of support we get around here. <laughs> it's brutal. You are brutal. Aren't you even going to talk to me? I'm just saying. I need a. I need. You know what I need? I need you to come in here during the breaks. I need the fingertips just above the eyes. Can we do that? Can we do that? Probably no. not. Probably not. No. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for your support as well. I always appreciate that. All right. Now. Here's the deal. The Metascare tactics that are being employed by the Obama administration. Uh, President Obama, uh, he was a lead dog on this in his big speech. You know, this would be the end. The Paul Ryan plan would be the end of Medicare as we know it. Listen, Medicare as we know it will end if nothing is done. It is an unsustainable program. We know that. So is Medicaid. So is Social Security without major change. Let me tell you. What's going on here in 60 seconds? 407 916 5400, because I want to stay on the clock and keep my promise to you, headache or not, that at 652 you're going to get real time traffic and weather together updated on the twos. And here it is. And we're looking at sunshine. Catch it early this afternoon. We could get some scattered thunderstorms. going to get hot and steamy, no doubt about it, about 90 degrees in Orlando. And uh, we're at 69 degrees here in the city, beautiful right now, as dawn breaks. And it looks like a terrific, terrific morning, but a hot day coming. Beautiful full moon when I came in here this morning. That's one of the beauties of getting up and coming in this early. Boy, what a fantastic full moon the last couple of nights. Now, um... 
the reality is the Medicare tactics of Pelosi, Brown, the president, Schumer, everybody else, okay, all the liberal Democrat talking points on this. Here's the reality on the riot budget plan, which did pass the House, which sadly for this nation, I believe, will be DOA in the still Democrat-controlled Senate. You know, we got a ton of Senate races. Most of them are Democrats up for grabs in 2012. Um, we can really take bold steps towards saving this country from complete collapse, if we haven't collapsed by then, by, by, by ending the Democrat majority in the United States Senate. Wouldn't it be great not to have to listen to Harry Reid droning on and on and on? Good Lord. All right, now, the, riot, the Ryan budget plan, the one they say would end Medicare, the one they say is cruel and heartless to our seniors, Here's the reality. It would cut $6.2 trillion in government spending over the next decade, and it would change Medicare, not to destroy it, but to save it, so that people over the age of 55 would get special payments to help them buy private insurance on a new Medicare exchange. Okay? Now keep in mind, everybody's talking like this is all going to happen tomorrow under the Ryan plan. If it were to become the law of the land, and we'd all be better for it, in my view, but it's not going to happen now because it will be blocked by the United States Senate. If passed, the Ryan plan, the changes would not go into effect until 2022. That's, what, 11 years out? The Ryan plan also would increase Medicare eligibility by 2033. Actually, it increases the age of eligibility. Only people 67 years old and older would qualify. But people are living longer now. Do the math. You know, and the whole baby boom generation is starting to retire now. That's 76 million people born between 1946 and 1964. They've dominated the economy at whatever stage of life they've been. And right now they're going to create major problems with funding these entitlement programs. And Pelosi and Brown say we've got to keep Medicare exactly the way it is. That's not doable. It will collapse along with the country and not be available to anybody unless it is changed, unless it is restructured. But the increase in the age of eligibility doesn't kick in until 2033. And for people who are now 55 or older, the Ryan plan changes nothing. And that's where Pelosi and Brown, Pelosi in particular, because I have her on tape, was so disingenuous at the local senior s center because she so dis de-emphasized that fact to the point of virtually ignoring that reality. Because here's the strategy. Here's the strategy. No block of voters is more influential at the polls than seniors because they show up on election day. They care about this country. They're connected to the issues. They vote in enormous numbers, a super high percentage, unlike any other age group. Okay? So the idea is gin up the fear factor with Medicare tactics aimed at seniors. And you saw exactly that yesterday with Pelosi and Brown. It's a microcosm of what they're going to start doing all over the country now. And all of a sudden, you scare enough seniors, you get enough votes from seniors, and Barack Obama's got a shot at a second term as president. Because you're going to get a bunch of scared seniors, the ones who were not well informed, who are going to say, you know, that Barack Obama, I never really liked him, and I voted conservative all my life, but I have to tell you, uh, you know, when they're talking about taking away my Medicare, I'm going across party lines. I never thought I'd vote for a liberal Democrat like Obama, but he wants to save my Medicare. So, uh, ha, I'm sorry, uh, uh, they're scaring me in the Republican Party, and I... Uh, um, huh, I'm so scared, I'm going to vote Obama in again because he and Nancy Pelosi want to save my Medicare. Your Medicare is already saved, you gomer. Give me a break. You don't understand. You're over 55, you're in. 
Things don't change. Nobody's talking about taking away your Medicare. Nobody's talking about that. What we're talking about here is restructuring for people 55 and under so there is a Medicare. Because otherwise there will not be. Man. You know, I don't mind people who have a different point of view. But I can't countenance liars. And they are so disingenuous. And the meta scare card was played first by the president this time around. This game has been played before. In that speech that was supposed to be about, uh, about policy on the budget. And how to fix things. Not about kicking off a re-election bid. You know, but now, now they're sending them all out there to play the meta scare card. And you know what scares me? I'm afraid it might work. That's why I'm more committed than ever to getting the truth out there from this microphone to the best audience in talk radio so you can take the word across the land. Here on BHL. Two more hours to go. Oh, should we get rid of the local expressway authority? That's where our number two begins on the 50,000-watt front porch. Most of you are going to get dinged by tolls while you're listening to the Bud Man here. You don't want to miss this segment. It's next on BHL. 7 o'clock, Michelle Morello coming up with the news.
Hey, you want to get rid of the um, Orlando Orange County Expressway Authority? Sounds good to me, but but there are some things we need to talk about here, and I'd love to know how you feel about the prospect of seeing our toll road agency disappear. I wish I could tell you that the entire toll road system were about to disappear, but that doesn't appear to be on the table anywhere. Okay, but what I'm talking about is getting rid of this corrupt, arrogant, unresponsive, and wasteful.